An alternative approach to foster care, the Mockingbird family model, is offering both foster children and foster families increased stability and support, and the city of Kent is bringing this method home to their community. Fernando Clara of the Mockingbird Society is joined by foster parent Liz Wisham to explain how it all works. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So let us know, what is the Mockingbird Society and what is the family model associated with it? Uh, so the Mockingbird Society is a small nonprofit organization. Um, our mission is to end youth homelessness and also improve the foster care system and we do that through three ways really we work with the youth um, they're the ones that identify the issues within the child mm -hmm. welfare system that we should be focusing on and then uh, we see ourselves as conduits we make sure that those youth are able to advocate for themselves um, make sure that they're in the right room with the right people and so they really lead our work um, and so we're looking at this graphic now with a hub home in the middle mm -hmm. and this is part of your family model correct correct, correct. explain to me how this works um, so our family model is people like Liz. Okay. Liz. <laughs> Liz, do you want to tell us? Sure thing. So we are the hub home. We're in the center and then we support up to 10 families who are doing foster care. So we're able to give the foster family some real-time support mm -hmm. and give stability for children who are being cared for by these families. So maybe somebody needs you to come over and stay for a bit? Yes, or, or a family might be going on vacation and it's not approved for the foster child to travel they come to stay with us. We get together with our families once a month, so the children get to know us, so they're not going to yet another stranger's home. Yes. And they get, they have that comfortableness, and again, it's stability for those children. So it takes a village. Yes. And that's your village that's right there. Village. So that addresses, yeah. you know, what happens when there are holes in the system, or the child yes. might end up someplace that's unfamiliar. What are some of the other problems this addresses, or benefits that this has for kids? So the goal is for uh, Constellation to be in a community and to help keep the kids in the community. So, the so they work, can stay at school, yes, that kind of thing. Yes, and that's why we're trying to focus in Kent, uh, because children in Kent are being placed in Monroe, or, oh or like right now we're, on, we're out in Carnation, we have a bunch of children from Kent and they're being put in a yellow cab to go to school because we want to keep them in their school and their community to the best right. of our ability. But we can all imagine you know, we have kids, we were kids, what yeah. it would be like, you, you've already been through this upheaval and now you have this extra X factor that yes. you're dealing with. So how do you get this to Kent? What's the process? Are, are we close? Um, so that's what we're working on right now. We're mm -hmm. actually um, heavily recruiting for foster parents in the area. Great. Um, really the whole purpose is, uh, you know, as Liz mentioned, is to keep their kids in the community. Right now, 82% of the youth that are enter foster care system from the city of Kent are unfortunately moved out. Yeah. And so what this is looking for is uh, for those foster parents to, you know, particularly folks like Liz, um, to be one of our hub homes to be able to create that uh, sense of family, that sense of community, and that really keeps the youth uh, connected, not only to um, other youth that are able or in the same situation as them, they're able to see somebody, you know, and talk to somebody right. without yeah. having to explain. Feel safe yeah. and, and have some continuity. So if people are, are watching this and they think they could be a foster parent or know somebody who could, how do they reach you? Uh, you can reach us. Um, our information is up on the uh, uh, website, um, but at the Mockingbird Society, um, at also uh, we have um, <coughs> partnerships with uh, Catholic Community Services, um, as well as with uh, Department of Children, Youth, and Family Services. Um, they're actively re recruiting for foster parents. Good. So if you're interested, please reach out. Well, who makes a good foster parent? What qualities are you looking for? Uh, someone who's flexible, loves children for sure and uh, willing to advocate for those children and to be willing to go the long haul. Yeah, the commitment over mm -hmm. time. Yeah. This seems like it's such a good thing obviously for the child but also for the foster family and for the community as well because yes. you keep a, a certain kind of stability and cohesiveness that is lost in right. what you're describing where people are you know, sent many miles away. Right, yes. right, so right now the average um, youth, if you're in foster care, you're gonna move five times. <sighs> And to put that in perspective, each time the child moves, they're losing between four to six months of their education. Wow. That's how back there. Um, so you can imagine by the end, unfortunately, statistics show that only 49% of the youth in foster care are actually going to graduate from high school. Well, it makes out sense of those, when you look at that. Yeah. yeah. The, out of those 49%, only 44 go on to college. And out of those 44, only 3% um, graduate. So we really want to turn that yeah. around and make it 97% graduation rate. We can do better than that. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. We appreciate it. If you'd like to support the Mockingbird Society's mission, you can attend their benefit luncheon on Friday, October 4th by registering online. And as we mentioned, there's more info on our website. We'll be right back.